Hello everyone, today I will show you how to check p-delta effect and how we can include this effect inside ETAP software. Going to ASC, as shown in this section, we need to compute the stability coefficient theta, and if this coefficient is smaller than 0.1, therefore we can neglect this effect. For P, it's the total vertical design load, and we don't need to use any kind of factors like 1.2 that or 1.6 live, we just use one. Delta is the design store drift as defined in section 12.8.6. Going to this here, as shown, the design story drift is multiplied by CD over I. And this equation, it have I over CD. Therefore, uh, we don't need to, to use the amplified displacement. This is the meaning of this equation. For I is the importance factor. P is the shear demand. H is the story high. CD is the deflection amplification factor. Okay, the stability coefficient shall not exceed theta maximum as determined from this equation. And beta is the ratio of shear demand to shear capacity of the story. And if theta is greater than theta maximum, the structure is potentially unstable and shall be redesigned. Okay, this is what we need to know about the P delta inside ASCE. And going now to this Excel sheet, I have prepared some important information. We need to obtain the shear demand, the vertical design loads displacement and the story drift is just the difference between displacement and i have used this equation which is this one without cd over i because i will obtain the displacement which is not the amplified one and regarding the the forces we need to use in order to compute the shear actually it doesn't matter if we use a large or a small force because as you can see here there is a ratio between the design story drift and the shear demand therefore if we are using a large force this will give larger drift and in same manner if we are using a small force we will get small drift therefore this is just lateral capacity uh, and it doesn't matter if we use a large or a small force to check this effect however we should use a static force don't use dynamic force to check this effect okay now i will go to etaps I have defined a load combination here, that plus 25% of life. I will use it to check P-delta effect. And from display show tables. Story forces. I will use that plus 25% of life. Of course, we don't need anything else here. This is for P, design vertical loads. Okay, what we need is this P, which is the vertical loads. And I will choose the top location because we are applying the lateral load at the top of each story. Therefore, what we need is just this column here. Okay, I will copy it to this Excel. Okay. Now we need shear forces. Okay, I will put equal and I will go to this Excel sheet. And I will copy the ELF lateral forces. We can obtain them actually from ETAPS. It's just the same idea. And for shear, I will compute it manually. Shear forces is equal to this. Okay. And I will say that this one is equal to this one. Okay, lastly we need the displacement from ELF. Going to ETAPS. We can obtain it from the display response plot. However, I will choose it from here. From floor plans. I will select all the stories. 
I will select this joint and from this play just select EQX and EQY Okay, displacement, joint displacement. Okay, this one is in millimeter. We need to divide by 1000 because I'm using meter as a unit. Keep it. And now for EQY. Okay, this is all for p-delta effect. Now the stability coefficient is computed using this equation. Therefore, in many cells here as shown, the theta exceeds 0.1. Therefore, we should include p-delta effect in our model. And at the same time, uh, theta maximum is computed from this equation, right? If I put beta equal to 1, it will give 0.1. Actually, beta here is really important to be provided. I may say, for example, 0 0.5. And there is something very important that theta shall not exceed 0 0.25. If theta exceeds 0 0.25, the structure is unstable and we need to, re to redesign. And for this one, for the y direction, theta is actually smaller than 0 0.1. It shall not be included for y direction. However, I will include p delta effect for both directions. And before doing this inside ETABS, let me show you something very important. Going to building weight here, I have put the mass participation ratio and the period of each mode in the first table. However, this table is based on the gross moment of inertia. And this for walls with the crack section, we have not yet uh, extracted the results. I will do it now before including P delta effect from display. Model participating mass ratio. File to Excel. Okay, we need rotation about z-axis and the summation of these mass participations. And I will delete these here. And what we need is just those results. I will go to this Excel and I will copy here. As shown here, the obvious thing is about the change in period due to a change in the structure stiffness. When we are using the gross moment of inertia, we have a period for the first translational mode equal to 3.2 seconds approximately. However, now it's uh, almost 6 seconds. This change in period is due to a change in the stiffness of the structure. Therefore, the structure is now more flexible. And this is something very important I want you to notice. And now I will show you when we include the P delta effect how even these value will change. Okay, going now to ETABS. Okay, going to define. From P delta option we can include P delta. However, before doing this, let me check this one, model cases, and modify. As shown here, the P delta here is none. Nothing is included inside this model. The load case and in same way if we go to these load cases the same use present p delta setting is none therefore p delta is not yet included inside these load cases 
Okay, now if we go to define P delta options, I will use the last one and I will include all the dead loads plus 25% of the live load. Of course, I choose the last option, which is the best option. The second one is not that good. This is more accurate. Okay. Now, if we go to the model case, we can see that the P delta is already included inside this load case. And in same way for all other load cases. I will run the model now for the last time to check the difference between including P delta and without including P delta. Okay, the analysis is finished now. I'm going to display show tables. Okay, as shown here, these two models have the same flexural stiffness. However, here I have included P-delta effect. And the period have increased a little bit compared to this one, as shown. Therefore, including P-delta effect will increase the structural flexibility. This is actually what we should notice. And this is the end of this video, and please continue the next one.